were just talking about the big news in Bomberland this weekend, a three-year extension for hometown hero Nick Dembski. And uh, Nick joins us now on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Nick, what's up, man? How are you? Congratulations on the new deal. Appreciate it, man. No, I'm doing good. I'm doing uh, I'm doing a lot better now than than I was the past couple of days. <laughs> uh, I, I hear you. Listen, I want to talk about the off season, look ahead to next, maybe hit a few other topics, but um, fill us in on uh, the last few weeks. Um, how did it all come together, and were there some nervous moments that this might not get done? Uh, you, you know, yeah. Uh, in this business, you know, you just never know kind of <laughs> what, what's what's going to happen. So yeah, there were a couple. Uh, you know, nervous moments, but at the end of the day, you know, I kind of always, always knew deep down that you know th- this would get done, and 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 this is where I need to be. So um, there's a lot of uh, you know momentum that 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 uh, was raising these last couple of weeks. So uh, you know, there's a lot of a lot of hope and, and a lot of optimism uh, towards it, and you know, I'm just happy it got done. Hey, um, how does the whole negotiation work? Do you have an agent? Is it someone that they basically do all that and just kind of keep you abreast of what's happening or how involved were you in it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, yeah, we have a, we or sorry, I have an agent. So, I mean, he did, uh, he did the, the most of the work for me. He just would kind of report back to me and kind of be a middleman if, if you will. So, um, yeah, no, he, he did a great job, and uh, you know, again, I'm just happy that both sides of the party uh, could come to agreement and and uh, you know, lock me in for the next three years. Uh, the three year uh, term was huge. I mean, I was uh, first of all, I think like most Bomber fans, just you know, kind of breathed easy. Great to see the release that Nick's back, and then saw that it was three years. I'm sure you're <laughs> happy you don't have to go through this again for the next couple seasons. Um, how important was it to get? that level of term with the Winnipeg Football Club when you signed this contract? Yeah, it, it was important to me. I mean, that was that was probably one of the main things that, that I wanted to go after was just, you know, a, a lengthy deal. Um, you know, and 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 again, I'm, I'm happy it worked out. I mean, I, I know that they wanted me here and, uh, you know, I definitely wanted to be here. You know, I wish that, you know, negotiations was, was that easy, but uh, it's not. So that's what took it so long. And, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, it got done. And uh, yeah, so I'm just I'm just happy to be part of it. Well, that is good news. What um, like was it basically done yesterday? I mean, how long does it t- how long does it go from you saying, OK, we got a deal signing whatever's done to the team saying rest easy, Bomber fans. Dembski's <laughs> back for three. Yeah, it was it was actually done Saturday night. Um, so that was awesome. Um, you know, it was it was the day before the tampering begun. So I mean, I don't think they released it till Sunday afternoon. So um, you know, they they obviously just uh, trusted me. You know, not to talk to any other teams. And I mean, I, I didn't want to talk to any other teams. This is where I wanted to be. So you know, I uh, basically turned my phone on airplane mode and and came down to the stadium and signed the bad boy. And and uh, yeah, here we are now. So. You know, that tampering period is interesting. I'm not sure if people, you know, fans maybe that don't watch the off season as much as the, the regular season realize, but in a lot of ways, free agency essentially starts now, um, you know, with the ability to get offers and talk to other teams about it. So in a lot of ways, I'd imagine Saturday night, there was somewhat of a deadline for you, but especially the football club, knowing where your head was at and if you were going to be back with the team. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think, uh, you know, obviously we had a lot of, a lot of signings this, this past week. And I think uh, when all those signings happen, they unfold, you know, opportunities. And, and, and I think, you know, a couple of them unfolded opportunities for me. So, uh, yeah, you know, I feel like there was some urgency there. But at the same time, you know, again, negotiations don't happen as easy as everybody would like to. And, uh, you know, they definitely take some time. But, you know, good, good, good things always take time. So that, that's the way I look at it. Did you uh, did you get to grind them right at the end for a couple special details, maybe a bigger locker or a better spot in the room or anything like that? Uh, none of that. I mean, I've, I've been in the same locker, so I'm, I'm happy right where I am. But uh, no, may, may, maybe a couple of, like ice cream sandwiches after practice or something like that. I should have mixed that in there. <laughs> um, Nick Dembski is with us back with the Bombers for a three-year term after signing on the weekend. Um, Nick. Ever since the season ended, um, you know, as we looked into this off season, it was about, you know, seeing what Kyle Walters could do in keeping this group together. I mean, you guys have had raised the bar here in the city, have had such great success, came so close in last year's Grey Cup from making it a three-peat. Um, how would you describe the uh, will of you and your teammates to be a part of this again next season going forward and 
really kind of starting a campaign of a uh, little unfinished business considering the way last year ended. Sure. And I think, I mean, I think that's the extra motivation to get, to get everybody, you know, back together. Um, you know, obviously it's a new season when, when, when 2023 hits, but at the end of the day, I mean, this has been a long off season with, with what we could have had. So um, I think that plays a, you know, a little, a little role or a little factor in the back of everybody's mind. And, you know, everybody's been, been talking, I've been talking with, with, with guys kind of on and off throughout the off season and, and just, you know, just kind of, the extra little motivation, you know, just a little extra message of, 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 you know, why we train and why we work hard. And yeah, you know, I just, I can't wait to get back in the locker room with those boys during training camp and, 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 uh, you know, start preparing for, for a new season. How, um, how long did it take you to get over the loss to Toronto in the Grey cup? Have you yet? And have you watched the game? I, I have watched the game. Yeah. Um, took me a while to watch the game, honestly. Um, uh, you know, when I watch football games now, you know, it's not really like a, I don't really watch them like a fan uh, CFL games. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really studying and kind of seeing what, what what's going all on. You know, it's my job. So, um, you know, NFL, it's a little bit different. So playoffs, I can, you know, NFL playoff football, I can kind of enjoy and relax. But uh, yeah, our, our football game, I don't think I watched till, till after Christmas probably. So, um, you know, I took it in, I took a pretty deep dive into it and uh, you know, I, that probably helped me get over it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a type of guy that kind of just likes to, you know, put, push stuff away like that. But, you know, it was definitely it was definitely needed to watch it and just kind of go through it and uh, and just kind of see what was going on. And, and honestly, you know, even just watching that just added a little bit of extra motivation. So, um, you know, as I said, I just can't wait to get back in back to work and, and uh, get back to it with the boys. Uh, I mean, listen, I mean, the margin of – margin between winning and losing i mean with two great teams in a championship game is is so razor thin we've seen it happen for the benefit of the bombers and one of those great cups and then obviously on the other side um but you mentioned about that you know that motivation for everyone around this already was a team that had a championship pedigree and i don't think anybody ever questioned um the commitment level of everyone that plays for mike o'shea um but i would imagine that you know what you guys have accomplished so far and how close you were to the three peep, but knowing that that can be a blip if you're able to come back and win again is a huge part of not just your decision to stay here, but Kyle Walters, Wade Miller, everyone trying to keep this group together that has, you know, basically created um a culture of winning unlike anything we've seen here in a long, long time. Sure. I mean, yeah, that's that's the goal of this game is, is to win. And I mean, when you have a good locker room and good group of guys doing it and a good organization, good front office that, that wants to keep everything, you know, a low at a low turnover rate. I mean, uh, you know, it, it's definitely a, a formula for success. So, you know, there's a lot of leaders in this locker room. There's a lot of leaders, you know, you know, coaching us as well. So, I mean, not just Osh, you know, Osh is a great leader, of course, but, you know, we got Buck and, and Richie and, and, and the list goes on of, of all the coaches that, that are, uh, you know, filling in those spots. So, you know, again, I'm just happy to be a part of it. You know, I, this is definitely somewhere I want to play and, and where I want to be and, and somewhere where I'd love to finish my career out. So, you know, to sign three years, that's a, you know, that's a, that's a pretty good start to that. And, you know, I just have a lot to prove and, and, you know, just make sure that, you know, this position stays mine. What, uh, I've got to ask you, what it, was it like over the course of the last month, say, um, while you were working towards a deal, and I'm not sure how much back and forth there was, how often that happened, but at the same time, you're seeing the likes of Willie and Jackson Jeffcoat and uh, all the guys sign and come back one by one, um, and knowing that you were still out there and needed to get a deal done yourself. Yeah, for sure. I mean, but, you know, all, all those pieces are, are very critical pieces. So, I mean, you know, it'd be tough to come back to, to, to a team that doesn't have, you know, the Willies exactly. and the Jacksons and, and everything. So, you know, it just makes it a little bit more, you know, obviously you get a little bit more anxious to get it done, but at the same time, you know, you can't really compare, you know, my position to somebody else's position or, or, you know, where I lie on the free agent, you know, compared to where they lie on, on the free agent poll. So, um, at the end of the day, you know, I guess you get mixed emotions from it, you know, get happy because, you know, you're close to these guys, excuse me, and build relationships with these guys. But at the same time, you know, you get a little bit anxious about your own situation, but, you know, you just got to re remember it's business and, and that's how it goes. And, and you know, just be patient and wait your turn and, and things will work out. And, you know, that's what happened here. So well, yeah, at the, same, just, at the same time, I imagine it, you know, 
makes you want to get something done with this team even more, knowing that your boys are all back and um, sure. the job is going to be come back and uh, and do it all over again. Nick Dembski of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers is with us. So outside of uh, sweating out and getting a new contract done for three years with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, what have you been up to the last couple of months? How's the off season been? Off season's been good, man. I mean, uh, you know, I, I used to do a little bit of work uh, with Canada Life Financial Advising. I took a step away or a step back away from that, and now I uh, I coach a lot. So I, I coach mornings, recruit ready, uh, do a lot of coaching there. Uh, I've been playing a little bit of hockey, uh, you know, just staying in shape that way. But then I've also been taking care of my body as well. Um, you know, just stretching a little bit more. You know, I'm putting a big, big uh, emphasis on stretching this year. You know, everything in, in my power I want to do uh, to stay on the field this year. So, you know, it just just doing the little things off the field to make sure I stay on the field. It's funny you said, you, you mentioned that because we were talking with Jackson Jeffcoat last weekend and he talked about how when he was younger, you know, he was just trying to put on weight. He was basically spending 90% of his time pushing plates and whatnot. He says now... Even with the position that he plays, it's way more about flexibility, keeping your body healthy. I mean, the focus focus is different now at this point in his career than it was earlier on. Um, how how has your training changed over the years, and and is it significantly different today, knowing what you know now and having been through the grind of a number of professional seasons? Yeah, it's a little bit different. Uh, I mean, I think everybody, you know, back back when you're a little bit younger, you're always trying to, you know, push for the for the big numbers and and push for the big weights, and you know that way you can send it off to to universities and colleges and stuff like that. But you know, ever since I've been a pro, you know, it's it's more, uh, you know, just about the reps and the movements and and the flexibility and making sure I get the full range of motion. You know, so uh, I try to obviously still stay uh, elusive out there and and uh, explosive, but. At the end of the day, I mean, it, it's a lot more kind of looking after your body and, and uh, you know, making your joints feel a little bit better rather than, you know, just trying to lift the whole stadium, right? How much uh, how much puck you've been playing? I mean, you're a hell of a player. I mean, growing up and playing all the Cloud of Hawks, I mean, you really are a pretty well-rounded athlete that was impactful in a number of different sports. Um, you know, now that football is your focus, but you're out. I mean, are you on a team? You get out there regularly? Are you more in uh, – uh, a guy that just dominates the ODR with the fellas. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I haven't played. I mean, I, I did ODR uh, when was it Boxing Day? That's probably the last time I was on at the ODR. Other than that, I mean, I play. Uh, I play every Wednesday and Friday with just a good group of guys, and and really, it's no refs. We just rent a, rent the ice and drop the puck, and and just kind of divide ourselves in the team and just play. So I mean. That's kind of more my speed right now. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to make it to the show or anything anymore. You know, those days are over. So uh, beer league, you know, there's still some of those guys out there that, you know, try to try to prove you wrong and, and still get their last chance. So, you know, I try to stay away from that a little bit. Um, but, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll get, you know, sometimes my, my boys will call me up for a game. So, I mean, it's always nice to kind of get that competitive in there. But then all of a sudden, you know, you get hacked in the back of the leg and you're like, okay, yeah, this is this is why I don't play hockey competitively anymore. So, anyways, it's all in good fun, yeah. though. Yeah, heads up to the beer leaguers. There's no scouts at your game, guys. <laughs> don't uh, <laughs> don't, uh, don't worry about it. Did you get out of Winnipeg at all? you get anywhere warm or uh, just been grinding into here on a day-to-day basis like the rest of us? Yeah, definitely been grinding. I mean, you know, it wouldn't be a Winnipeg winter without the grind. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I – uh, I've been to Moose Jaw, did a football tournament out there. So, I mean, if that's getting away, then then I've done that. But uh, I'm going to, with uh, my fiance, actually, I'm going to uh, uh, Phoenix in f- February 23rd. So that'll be at the end of the month. And then uh, I'm going to Chicago for another football tournament in the middle of this month and going to Minneapolis next month and then going to Vegas the month after that for, for another football tournament. So I'm on the road quite a bit, but it's more, you know, coaching. So business trips. Well, that, you know, that's interesting. Tell us a little bit more about this. I mean, I'm familiar with the Root recruit ready program. I mean, there's been a lot of, you know, uh, young Winnipeg players that have gone through that and it helped them maybe get to, um, you know, that next level with the post-secondary scholarship. And there's been a lot of bombers that have been involved in that before, but, um, Tell us, like, how involved are you in it, and um, how much you're enjoying working with uh, young guys that basically were you a decade ago. Uh, well, I, that's 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 the reason why I do it, man. Uh, I mean, you know, f- f- football football in Canada. I mean, it, it's definitely growing and, and it's definitely getting a, l- a lot more eyes on it. But I just feel like you know we can still develop these kids, you know, more and more each each year, and uh, you know. 
I, you know, I know I play football at a high level and, and I love giving back. I mean, you know, if I can give back as much as I can, then, you know, that's what I'm going to do. So, you know, I go out there, I coach three to four times a week. Uh, you know, I coach all the way from, you know, there's a couple of grade sevens on my team. There's some grade eights, grade nines, and then, and then, uh, or majority grade nines and grade tens. And, uh, yeah, so we, we do seven on seven. So we do a lot of development football, but we also do a seven on seven, which is just passing basically like pass Skelly for, for all you football guys out there and, uh, and woman, but, uh, basically just seven on seven pass Skelly and you go down, you play against other teams in the States. Um, you know, Pylon runs a lot of these tournaments. Um, so yeah, we go down there and compete and, uh, yeah, it's awesome. You know, I love doing it. I love the competition part. I love how it, you know, keeps my mind into football, but at the same time, it's just a way of giving back, uh, to the kids to, you know, getting that chance and, you know, one thing that I like to tell my kids is like, you know, they're, they're, you know, when we go down there, it might be faster, there might be bigger players than you, but I'm going to make you into the smartest football that you can possibly, football player that you could possibly be. So that's kind of our, our uh, formula, I guess you can say, is is making smarter football players that that you know are going to understand the game and, and understand the why. It's not just a, not just a, you know, just to do so. You've been an athlete your whole life and been involved in a bunch of sports, but obviously football has become your occupation now you're coaching as well i mean the good thing is we don't really have to worry about this for a while because you got a new three-year deal with the winnipeg blue bombers and uh, certainly a lot of tread left on the tires but is coaching something that you think you might do seriously once you finish playing and has this experience with recruit ready maybe changed the way you think about that as a possibility for post-playing career yeah i've been i've been doing it ever since uh since i guess it would have been after the 2019 season was kind of my first year of, of kind of running an offense on a team and then slowly been a head coach, I guess, on this whole other team. We used to have one team. Now we have two teams. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's a lot of fun. I love I love coaching. I love interacting with the kids. I love being around football and and I love just kind of being a role model and just and just, you know, going in there each day and and, you know, trying to prove to these guys, you know, how much better they can be. You know, I love motivating kids and kind of getting the full potential out of them. So, I mean, you know, that's the reason I coach. And I feel like, you know, that's the reason why anybody should coach. So, I mean, if it's in the future plans, who knows, it, it'd probably be have to be the right opportunity and the right fit. And, you know, at the end of the day, I, I do hope I play football for, for uh, you know, hopefully for the rest of this contract and maybe even another contract after that. So, um, you know, it just matters, matters where the cards fall when, when the time's right. Have you, uh, have you dropped any good O'Shea-isms on, uh, on your young football players on your squad? Is, uh, does any Osh come out of Nick Dembski when he's in a coaching role? <laughs> Probably a little bit, honestly. I mean, I'm, I'm sure, you know, half the time when I'm talking to these kids, I kind of just black out and just say what, say what I know. So I've learned a lot from, from Osh, and he's taught me a, a, a great deal of, you know, kind of just the IQ of the game, you know, and, and that's, you know, the philosophy that I've been trying to, you know, get, get, all, get these kids on. So, um yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure a little bit of OSHA has bleeded down uh, onto me for sure. Listen, Nick, thanks so much for the time. I know everyone was fired up to hear the news on the weekend that you're back for three more seasons in blue and gold. Best of luck with the kids coaching and your trips over the next little bit, and uh, can't wait to see you back at IG Field with the fellas, looking to uh, take care of some unfinished business when we get going with this season. Yes, sir. Appreciate it, man. Thank you for having me. 